hey, I just wanted to do this completely unscripted video to just talk about what my AI coding experience has been like in 2025, now that we're approximately one third done with the year. And if you don't know me, I'm Zen, I'm a senior AI engineer, and I do use AI quite a lot to get my work done because I implement AI models and therefore I do a lot of software engineering as well. So in short, you see two contribution graphs here. These are my GitHub contribution graphs for pretty much most things related to work. So it's about code contributions as well as creating issues, you know, making sure pull requests get reviewed, etc. And I've got the one for 2024 here on the left, and then I've got one for 2025, at least up to the point that I've recorded this video so far. And I know that contribution graphs are not really great reference material sometimes for understanding your productivity, but I believe that's actually mainly the case when you're comparing different people, because different people have completely different styles of committing code to a repository and writing issues, you know? But I do actually think that comparing your contributions from yourself on a year-to-year -year basis can be pretty useful, especially in my case. I know that I'm pretty consistent with, you know, the way that I actually commit code. I kind of roughly know that I always commit code in certain amounts of blocks, right? So in my case, I actually think it's super fair to have a look at how my contribution amounts have shifted over these two years and how AI coding has helped with that. So if we take a look at the same period in 2024, so like, you know, approximately this period. Uh, let's just keep things easy and say that there's like about 600 contributions in there going off of my total count for 2024. It's probably not exactly accurate. Don't pay me on that. But, you know, this is not supposed to be a hard science at the moment. I'm just kind of rambling about what my experience has been. Uh, and then, of, of course, obviously in 2025, so far it's been 815 contributions. Now, if I kind of extrapolate this, I do actually expect that in this year, in total, I'll have 30% more contributions overall. So this is mainly code because most of my contributions are still code, but this is also related to, you know, issues, creating discussions, et cetera. And again, you know, just because there's an increase in contributions, you cannot really say that I've necessarily done a better job. But in my case, I have a couple of arguments as to why I think that I actually am increasing our productivity and a big part of that is due to AI coding. So the first thing we're seeing here is next to just more contributions, there's actually just more consistent contributions. Like you're seeing that I'm actually committing pretty much every working day, whereas in 2024, well, I mean, you've got a couple of gaps, which makes sense. I mean, I was probably deeply thinking about something, which I still do, but while I think about things, I can also just, you know, write some code much easier by using AI coding, which I do very often now with Copilot and Visual Studio Code. So the main lesson there is that I'm much more consistent in the contributions that I make, which is very nice. I think my team can rely on me for a lot of things because of that. And then next to that, one advantage of, you know, the fact that I'm increasing my contributions here is just that I get a lot of the groundwork, the typical rudimentary work done much faster. So I've got this little coding macro pad here that I use for AI coding. And I don't actually call this five coding personally, uh, not to kind of make it too serious, but uh, I do kind of take AI coding very seriously. So I wouldn't call it fired coding because I'm genuinely still trying to build very good and useful systems. I'm just using AI to take care of some of the more boring and repetitive work for me. So for example, these buttons do all sorts of things. So uh, this button here, the Copilot button opens the Copilot chats. It's pretty obvious. I've got this little wheel here that I use to switch between different models. And then I've got much more here, like this little thumbs up button, it's one of my favorites. When the agent makes a suggestion, I can just press this button to accept the suggestion, which is quite fun. So one example of the work that I actually use AI for would be things like front-end React components. I'm not saying that front-end engineers are completely replaced by AI, but of course there is a lot of typical work that you need to do in a framework like React. You know, think of prop drilling. If you're familiar with React, you would know what I mean, but if you're not familiar, basically in React, you sometimes need to pass information across different components. And having to do that sometimes takes quite a lot of, you know, thinking and, and just a lot of, that can really just, rudimentary code to pass along a variable to the component that you actually needed in. And I found that Copilot agents can do a really good job of just doing the prop drilling for me so that I can focus on other pieces which are more important. And I think that's really the key here. Not only am I having more contributions now, I'm also able to focus more on things that actually use my expertise. Because to be quite honest, uh, just defining variables and, and passing them along in this React example, that's not really a great 
utilization of my years of experience. So I don't use it for that. Now, of course, you might be thinking, well, you know, how is this really going to compare in 2026, right? Like maybe at the beginning of this year, I just had more to do. And I get why you could maybe be skeptical there, but I actually want to pull up the 2023 contribution graph because I've been surprisingly consistent. I pretty much had the exact same amount of contributions in that year compared to 2024. I don't know how I achieved that. Uh, you know, the gaps here are a little bit different because of course, you know, I take time off as well. Um, but here you also see that in 2025, I just have way more days, which are in the dark, dark green, which means that I did so many contributions on those days that they don't even stack up to days that are basically this very light green color, which is maybe just one or two contributions. So yeah, overall, I mean, personally, I am quite happy with the way that I'm using AI at work today. And I do really think that it's been a productivity boost for me. No, it's not made me 10x more productive, like a lot of other YouTubers would put it. But you can see here, it, it definitely has a positive impact on my work. And again, I use AI responsibly, so I can tell you with full confidence that this is not really impeding on the quality of my work at all. Uh, and I'm very curious to hear about you. So, you know, let me know in the comments down below how you're using AI coding nowadays, or if you're using AI for any other type of work. In my case, actually, this whole AI coding revolution is one of the reasons why I started the AI engineering community. You can find the description below because in this community, I really prepare people for their future careers where they're going to have to work with AI, whether they actually implement AI systems or they use AI for their actual work. You're going to have to do it because if you don't, you will actually be lagging behind because those who do use AI are going to become faster than you. And again, I'm not saying that that means that your role is going to be fully replaced, but this space is going to get a lot more competitive, especially if you're a new grad and you're just trying to join the market. So these are just my thoughts. I wonder what you think about it, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.